Hey guys, today I'm going to go ahead and explain why I trust Rudy more and his information more than I trust Star City Games, writers, uh, Channel Fireball writers, and or MTG Reddit posters who we don't know who they are. First of all, he is a person. Um, people have met him in real life. The majority of these talkers online, you will never meet them and they... Who knows who they are? They make it a point that they want to remain anonymous as if this was something brave. Oh, they're so brave. And at least Rudy puts his name out there. He has shown you his store, his vast Pokemon cards that have not done well. I know because Pokemon cards, I have lots of them too. So I will go ahead and say that some of the mistakes I made... I did consider what Rudy was doing at the time, which was buying lots of Pokemon cards. Now to go on to why I trust his advice, you know that Rudy is a capitalist. He worked on Wall Street. He worked selling insurance. I think there was one of his first videos was he was selling insurance to an old grandmother who didn't know what she was doing and he was pressured to sell to her. That's not different from Wall Street. Most of my friends, I went to NYU. I had many roommates from NYU Stern. Many really good friends from NYU Stern who work in the industry. One of them is a general manager of General Societe, which is a very large French bank. And he makes probably $2 million plus base a year with who knows how much bonus. He just got married and his wedding at least, I mean... Quote, he didn't pay for it, but you know how it goes, right? It's a great wedding. Really good food. But back to Rudy. Rudy is a capitalist. He's going to try to make as much money as possible. So even though he doesn't like the concept of Mythic Edition, because no local game store or no distributor or no nobody should like this concept except for the customer, if you're a middleman, you don't want to see Wizard of Coast selling directly to the customers because they don't they cut you out. What if Wizard of Coast decided to sell regular booster boxes, maybe like on Amazon, for ninety dollars? Well, it costs seventy-eight dollars to buy a box with free shipping. Maybe you compete against Amazon. It would be hard. But what if Wizard of Coast sold a booster box for ten dollars a box? They could do that, right? What would be preventing them from doing that? Nothing. There's no contracts in place. There's no promissory estoppel. There's nothing in place legally that would prevent them from selling boxes direct to consumer for $10. Yeah, they could do that tomorrow if they wanted to. I know that Rudy is always in it to make the most money, and that makes him predictable. And I like and he does things that can be predicted. So in a system where I know everyone's trying to make the most money, I can join the game and I know that player A will behave this way, player B will behave this way. I know that just like the mana source, it, trust me, if Rudy, if the mana source can come up with the idea of having his subscribers buy boxes for him, Rudy can come up with that idea. Anybody can say, hmm, maybe I should tell my patrons that I'll give them 25 bucks if they use their home address and they, I'll pay for shipping and stuff. Yeah. Anybody, even not Rudy, any, even a person with just like 18 different family members, with 18 different households, he could set up the system to operate. So when it doesn't go smoothly, yeah, you're going to be angry because you just lost thousands of dollars the system broke and it's not like all 18 of those people are going to behave the same way somebody could order it and then go take a nap go out for lunch and then four hours later find out oh my order got canceled oops oh well, i need to tell rudy now there's no fault in trying to maximize your profit this is the society we live in in fact this is the society i think we all should participate in what happens is sometimes Wizard of Coast will have these really ridiculous things. Like, it's so random. 
for instance, they wanted to sell 12,000 of these. They know that they could sell more and more people would be happy, yet they keep it as a limited product. Now, you might say, oh, because that drives up the reputation, that drives up the brand. My argument would be nothing in this proceeding has increased their reputation. In fact, I think it got they got slammed very hard. And there's no reason that some people... If you have $250 and you get paid at the end of the month or the beginning of the month, you shouldn't... The entry point, which is not really $250, it's $2,500 because everyone's going to buy two of these. Everyone's going to flip it. If the majority of the tickets or items that you are selling are being flipped within 20 within 10 minutes of a confirmation for three times the price, $700, $800, I would argue, yeah, you, as any capitalist, yeah, you should take advantage of this. You should ask all your friends and families. Um, there's that story of that MTG finance guy who would go to all these magic fests and who would bring in like eight different people and they would each buy a Mythic Edition and then he would resell it online that day and then make you know enough money make thousands of dollars a day and then he would pay strangers to buy these for him and suddenly he has 200 for the day and he can list it on ebay when he gets home my point is don't hate the player hate the game rudy is a very predictable player here he's going to buy reserve list he's going to sell standard that's it buy reserve list sell standard Anything he can flip that is in standard, he will flip. Anything that's on a reserve list, he's not going to flip. It's predictable what he's trying to do. So when a product comes out, which is easily flippable for three times the value, to say that he's not going to get a thousand people to buy it and flip it for him would be against what he stands for, which is capitalism. Now, does that mean less players get them? Yeah, one of my favorite stories about MTG Finance and how dumb it really is, truly it is quite dumb, is the guy who wrote an article about buying all of uh, a commander out. So let's say the commander, for ease of numbers, is worth a dollar today. He buys all the commander's cards out. It's a limited commander. He buys them out. It's not even that good. Goes up in price to eight dollars because as he buys inventory stores are noticing that there's less and less of it and then stores will post or if he buys them out completely within a sweep action which is really good hard to do implement but good to do they are going to go find more or buy more from their player base and then post it for eight dollars only problem is the guy has a thousand of this commander card what can you do well he's got to go find the highest buy list well, who's going to want a thousand of these? So he makes a quarter card. You have to consider his shipping. You have to consider his time. You know, you have to consider lost mail, the potential for losses, the packaging, the tracking, and all of this stuff. And now the card is eight dollars, and he's going to resell it to different vendors that he bought from for a dollar twenty-five. So he makes a tiny bit of money for a lot of work and screws over the player base. Yet, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, that is just how it works. It's sad, but we don't live in a, I was going to say a non-binary, but you guys know where I'm going to go with that one. We live in a society where if I am working as hard as I can to make money and I rely on myself, and I don't have a GoFundMe for $150,000 should I injure myself due to uh, personal desires, then we as a society will be okay. I'll be able to pay taxes. We'll get better roads. We'll get better public schools. Magic as a community, as a capitalistic community, is fine. That's the way it should be. But when you get into different things and why people... It's beyond me why someone would hate Rudy for something they themselves would do, but they don't have the capital to do. 
if anything, we should admire him because he has taken the he has pushed the envelope to the extreme of capitalism, which is something that I've always wanted to look at. When a dude buys a hundred thousand moats or a thousand moats and he doesn't post a picture, there's no video evidence of these moats ever, and then he claims it an expert. I don't believe that for one second. But when Rudy shows his boxes of Pokemon, his boxes of magic, I don't listen to what Rudy says. I listen to what he does. And what he's doing is he's stockpiling, stockpiling reserveless cards. I think he has a listing on Arabian Nights for like $10 million on eBay or something like that. Only available if you meet him at a bank of his choosing. I like it. That makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense is why everyone's so upset. The majority of this product will be flipped. That's just the nature of the beast. Wizard of Coast is not giving this product to the stores because Wizard of Coast doesn't want these stores to flip the product because that's exactly what the majority of them will do. Instead, they want to drive a secondary market. They want magic. You know, they want the... It's poor execution, but if done correctly, what happens is people are saying, whoa, you mean I can buy a magic set or a collection for $250 and flip it for $700 within like two minutes? Yeah, that's interesting. They want people to talk about magic in a positive way, that these pieces of cardboard where they can print any amount of them is worth a lot of money. That's what they wanted. Now, execution was incredibly poor, and they're going to pay for it a little later. And branding. But I'm sure eventually they'll fix the model. The model is very simple. 12,000 is too little with Jace. You know that. Make it unlimited. Let people buy as much as they want. And then everyone's happy. Bye guys.